in Manchester for the 2015 Party Poker World Pool Masters, one of the biggest prizes in pool. The venue, the Victoria Warehouse. We've had a thrilling opening to this year's event. Two of the world's top players have been pushed all the way in the opening matches. Defending champion Shane Van Boning started slowly when he won the title last year. He did the same against John Mora of Canada in this year's opening round and had to come back from 5-2 down to take the match 8-6. 2014 world champion Neil Spion also had to come from behind and take the last three ranks to beat Marcus Schumat of Sweden. Some sloppy scratches from the Swede cost him dearly and saw the 2013 Masters champion put his place in the last eight. 8-6 eight, the margin of his win, relief clear to see. So with just two matches completed, next up it's Chinese sensation Liu Haitao against the first of the English favourites, local boy Carl Boys. As far as I'm concerned, when you get invited to the World Pool Masters, it's a great honour and you know it's a tournament I want to win and it's very high on my agenda to win. I'm not really the type of player that likes playing in a sort of venue where we've got 16, 20 tables all going on, you know, with no real pressure. I like it when there's a crowd and all eyes are on you, so yeah, that's sort of my game. The format of this tournament can be quite harsh and brutal, but it's just because it's a short race, but I definitely prefer single elimination, so if you've lost your match, you're out, do you know what I mean? That's sort of what I like, but with it being a short race, because it's on TV and it's filmed and, you know, like I said, there's a crowd watching, it adds a different sort of pressure anyway, so, yeah, it definitely suits me. In this round one match, Boys was in for a torrid time against Lou Hightow. Although the Englishman won the opening rack, Hightow seized the initiative and took the next three. Boys valiantly fought back to narrow the gap, but a missed seven ball cost him the eighth, and the Chinese star increased his lead. We join the action with Lou leading five racks to three. He has not been breaking good. It's, he, he let the cue ball get away from him there again. Start the clock. That is just a poor break. It went straight from hitting the one and into the side pocket. It did not get kicked. So ball in hand for Carl. Well, exactly the same as rack number five. Lou scratching. Boys coming to the table with a golden opportunity. The only similarity between all the matches so far is that when one player threatens to take command, the other one comes back. Welcome to the Whirlpool Masters. <laughs> it's only going to get better from here on in. $20,000 prize money awaits the winner. $70,000 in the pot. He's going to mess this one up, Phil. Agreed, Ted. Although you have to take these middle pockets and treat them with respect because especially the near jaw is cut rather brutally. Make contact with that and the ball will be ricocheting away. Well, a 
again. <laughs> Finds himself uh, shooting off the rail. This is not a gimme. Carl Boyers getting the crowd back in cheering mode. He still trails, but only by five racks to four. Rack number 10. And Boise to break. Thank you, Rack 10. Carl Boyes to break, trailing four racks to five. Good break. Ooh. He would have liked for that two ball to go in. But now, the question is, can he feather that two ball in? I don't think so. No way, Jose. It was the last roll of the ball that deprived him there. I think the crown on the back of the referee now. <laughs> they better watch out. Nigel can be very stern when he has to be. Push out, cold. Start the clock. Now, earlier on when Lou Houtau played a snooker, he was accused of being boring. There, <laughs> Carl Boys just feathers the cue ball on a, on a routine push out, and they all say, Good shot. The crowd goes ballistic. <laughs> Extension call. Oh, Reset the clock, please. Start the clock. So Lou has the option to give it back, and that's exactly what he does. I must be honest, Ted, I'm not surprised in the slightest. I think this is really awkward for boys. And now Lou feels pretty bad about himself. That was so well executed. Hitting down on the wide ball like that to make that kind of contact, to lay that kind of snooker. For me, perhaps the shot of the match so far. Definitely. That's uh, going to be one on the highlight Settle reel down, right please. there. Yeah, extension cold. Gee, there. <laughs> Phil, they're not. They're really not booing those safety shots anymore, are they? <laughs> they were going crazy on that one. Well, this one, this is almost a guarantee foul. Got to shoot. Oh, what a great out. Fantastic shot. Well, getting the snooker back behind the Brown seven ball was obviously fortunate. But as Ted said, the escape, superb, especially with the clock running down and only one second of the shot clock remaining. It was like a half a second from being called by Nigel Reese. For a foul. Extension called. Okay, so Turn it down, guys. I can't hear the players. The oh, boys pulls out the jump stick. Yeah, Lou 
can see that. From the raucous reaction of the crowd there, I think they thought he got the snooker back for a moment and then the, the two ball just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. not his best uh, queuing effort there. The angle was a natural angle to get for the red three, but he got to pot the object ball. Well now, this match is wide open. here held by the fact that the four ball is in the same vicinity of the table as the the six so position here should be pretty straightforward and then the three remaining colors after that all sitting pretty Well, for a moment there, a section of the crowd broke out into a Casey and the Sunshine Band hit. And I think here, boys is just about to turn darkness into sunshine, at least get back onto level terms. And in the next minute, Phil, they're going to celebrate. First time since 1 1. Yes, Carl Boys is back on level terms. This time with Lou Hartau. It is 5 5. Thank you, Rack 11. So Carl, Carl Boyce, Boyce to break, 5-5, five, five. settle down please. Has won two straight racks, it's now a race to three. <laughs> He's got the eight ball down. It's that cue ball to slow down. Yes, he has got a shot on the one. Looks like plenty of angle. He can bring it out for the two ball. Yes, and the three is right smack bang in the middle of the table as well out in the open. Promising this. Can boys take the lead in the match for the first time since he took the opening rack? going to be a bit of a tester here. Let's see Carl's reaction never gets flustered. Extension cold. This is the shot here that could make or break the rack. So much pressure on. Oh, we go 
Goes on the full table bang. But great shot. But he snookered himself. That was a gutsy shot. Yes, and although it doesn't work like this, Ted, after a shot like that, I think he deserve more than he got. Yeah. He's going to have to give up the table, though. Well, the cue ball is close to the bottom cushion. There's distance between white and the red three ball, but it's not the telling safety or even the snooker that Vise would have wanted. Not at all. I think Blue's going to take this on. Stanton Cole. What do you think, Phil? It's about as tough a shot as you'll see on a pool table, especially under the circumstances. Oh, he got, he got unlucky hitting that nine ball. So now he is covered. He can't hit that four ball. But a great pot nonetheless. Yes, the, the seven doing to Lou what he did to boys after he banked the two, i.e. blocking the next ball. Well, he, he is a terrific potter, isn't he? He is just a lot of fun to watch. Settle down, please. Tied 5-5. Five, five. Settle down, please. It's a safety exchange. Oh, he could see that. Nicely done. From our perspective, it wasn't sure if he could get a proper angle on that, but sure enough, and now... That was well struck because he's got the position on the four. Rather the five ball. Oh. You know, except for the scratches. A few dry breaks. I mean, he his potting is just amazing. He's a very solid player who Carl Boys quite rightly respect. Is there a crumb of comfort for Carl Boys if it goes six five? Of course there is. We've had two matches so far completed in the tournament. And the two players who've led 6-5, i.e. John Mora against Shane Van Boning and Marcus Schumat against Niels Feyen, have both gone on to lose. So hope springs eternal for boys, but right now, Lou is in the driver's seat. 6-5 ahead, breaking in rack number 12.
It was rather scrappy play early on. I thought Carl Boys was very unlucky after that double on the two ball to snooker himself on the three behind the seven. Ultimately, though, it was that fine cut and then dropping on the five ball perfectly that opened the door for Lou to regain the lead. Well, I wish I got a tenner for every time Nigel Reese had said, settle, settle down, down please. please. He said it again there. Watch him out. Just kick somebody out. Well, yet another dry break. That's the one aspect of Lou's game tonight that's been weak, the break. Other than that, he's been tremendous to watch. Push out cold. So boys calls a push out. Just nudges the cue ball. So now Lou has the option to take the shot or give it back. Reset the clock. Start the clock. He decides to give it back. Well, not the most appetizing of tables. That is all wrong. And you scan the table for potential problems, Ted, and basically non exist. Not with the way this guy shoots. Nice power stroke there. Juice the ball back in position for the two. <laughs> what a terrific shot there. Although he currently resides in Blackpool, Carl Boys was born and raised in Radcliffe, which is not too far from here. The birthplace of three times world snooker champion, the late John Spencer also. That's why he's got such good support in this arena this evening. But there's no doubt about it. Lou Hao Tao is now marching on getting close to that victory line all the time. And if it goes 7-5 with him breaking in rack 13, boys, has got his back pressed firmly against the wall. Well, just by judging by the law of averages, Lou certainly do a good break as he struggled with the break shot. It's not looking good for Carl Boys right now. Every shot, dead center in the pocket. This is a, a queuing masterpiece here. Again, the only weak spot in his game has been the break.
And if Lou prevails, it will mean that the first three players into the quarterfinals will be from the three continental powerhouses of pool in the world. One European, one North American. And if he succeeds, he will be the first Asian. Truly international event. Can the man who's travelled 6,000 miles to be here ever come? The local favourite. And this elementary nine ball to move one away from victory here in round one at the World Pool Masters, Lou Hightow. Leading 7-5 over the local favorite, Carl Boys. Suddenly, the singing has come to a screeching halt. Okay, Rack 13, now high tower to break. Leading seven racks to five. So will it be a clean kill for Lou? Will he break and run? We certainly do a successful break. But yet again, more struggles. And a shot on the one. For boys, he's got the two ball out there. He's just got to negotiate position to the three. No certainties here, Ted. One thing, though, that is certain is that if Lou does get across the winning line, his break is something he's got to sort out against Niels Fine in the quarterfinals. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah, we've seen in this event, <laughs> most events that the how important the break shot is such an advantage if you if you're making two three balls in the break and getting a shot on the object ball you just keep your opponent parked in his chair good job on getting position on that red three Quiet, please. Carl Boys knows all about extraordinary comebacks. His greatest moment as an individual was winning the World 8-Ball Championship in the United Arab Emirates in 2010. In the final, he played Niels Fyon. He led 11-4. Fyon came back to 12-12. You would have thought... Anyone else would have crumbled, not boys. He won the decider to become world champion. This time, he's the one fighting back. Has he got enough in the locker to get over the line? Well, it's just uh, it's the old cliche, just take it one shot at a time. Certainly not panicking. He's got one thing going for him is that Lou is just having all kinds of problems with the break. You know, no matter what happens in this match, Lou won't Lou won't have that problem anymore because he's not going to be breaking anymore in this match. So Carl has to play perfect pool from here on in if he's going to win this match. Yeah. 
This is no gimme. In the very first rack of the tournament, Shane Van Boning missed a nine ball not dissimilar to this into the opposite top pocket. But there's no mistake from Carl Boys. This match is still very much alive. He's a fighter, always has been. And now he trails by just a single rack. Lou in front, just at 7-6. And really, the break has let Lou down even though he's ahead. It was just what Carl Boys needed, an invitation to maybe pull off a full-scale recovery. He's breaking in rack number 14. Now he could possibly take it hill-hill. Yeah, as you would expect here at the Whirlpool Masters with 16 elite players from all corners of the globe. Just intense competition. Well, nothing down. Nothing down, dry break, but no clear shot on the one. Well, more dry breaks in this match than either of the other two. And if we're about to go into a, a safety battle, Lou's got the better of these uh, over the course of this match. He's uh, proven to be a really good safety player. Well, there's certainly a safety opportunity here. Where there, there's a wall of balls, Phil. Yes, a wall, but boys needs only one to hide behind. Terrific shot. Boy, this this is a this really dangerous for Lou. You know what made that such a good shot? That Extension cold. Carl put that cue ball up against the rail and took out any jumping opportunity. So Lou's going to have to get out of this, uh, this snooker in the old-fashioned way with the regular cue stick. That was a great effort, but he has left it on. So will box office live up to his nickname and give the crowd full value for money? But well, yeah, if he takes this to uh, Hill Hill, he will have earned <laughs> the name box office. Extension cold. Because they're going to go nuts in this crowd. Of course, his greatest supporter is his girlfriend, Lynette Horsborough. Who's a, a very accomplished cueist. Very good snooker player. She'll be watching and praying and hoping in no particular order. Boy, the, the, the level of cueing in this match is just fantastic. at the start of the tournament we told you that in the whirlpool masters the exchanges were always ultra competitive in the first three matches a possible 45 racks could have been played if carboys 
wins this rack, which looks increasingly likely. Of those 45, 43 will be played. How different from last year when he beat Walid Majid, 8-1 in the first round. But if anything, a victory here would give him even greater satisfaction. We've seen on many occasions with Carl that he does have the ability and the tendency to pull rabbits out of the hat. How about the World Cup of Pool with Darren Appleton? They were dead and buried. And even when they got that lifeline, at the end, still Carl had to make several amazingly difficult shots under incredible pressure. So he's been there, done that. And he's about to tie it up. Maybe we should just let the crowd tell the story. The crowd loving it. What a match. And I think it's entirely fitting that it's gone the full distance. Down to the wire. Lou, Hightow, and Carl Boys locked together at 7-7. Seven, seven. And here we go, the last rack. Got the one ball down. He's got the green six down, but... No clear shot at a pocket for the blue two. Yes, a little collision there between the white and the, the pink four ball would have been manna from heaven for boys. Carl's going to try to lay another snooker. Look at this, right behind the orange five. But not quite enough. It's sticking out, so Lou can see the two. Extension call. He's going to try to hide that two behind the five. This is a real delicate shot. a scratch you know, by hitting it so hard he kind of opened up the possibility for for that to happen and for Carl boys now opportunity knocks when he was seven five down he must have thought it's not going to be my year that's his sister living every shot loving every moment now you won't get a better chance than this. Be quiet, please. Extension call. He was stretching a little awkwardly where he was putting the cue ball originally. Wants an angle on the blue two ball. And so this is the better way, although it's still got an awkward stance. Yes, 
Yeah, we've seen Carl in these positions before with all the, the pressure and the weight of the world on his shoulders and the expectations, and he's come through many times. So you would expect him to clear these balls. All evening, it's been raucous in there, very loud, at times too loud. Now, though, when the chips are down, you can hear a pin drop. Great shot. Wow. With authority. But the one place he didn't want to be was the cue ball tight on the side cushion with no angle on the orange five ball. And I'm afraid that's precisely where he's dropped. He's found himself on the rail quite a bit in this match. Hey, you're right, Phil. This is such a big shot right here. He's got to get position for the seven. He's going to find himself there again. And he's got a little bit of room. Still, he's got to get position on the eight. This one's not over yet. Well, if he is on the path to victory, he's taking the scenic route. <laughs> Maybe, yes. Well, you gotta like the way that Carl's letting the arm out. I mean, he has hit three or four shots in a row where it's just pounding the ball. Are you kidding me? Disbelief is the only word. How did he miss that? He basically the gave clock, himself please. the shot thinking about position. Set the clock, please. Tried to cheat the pocket. He please missed the, clock, the eight ball, the most elementary pot you can ever wish to see. Extraordinary. Just tried to cheat I, the pocket, overcut it slightly. I can't believe what I just saw. And neither can they. Whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. That was the first shot we've seen of Lou where he was feeling the pressure. What a shot for a victory. He got it. He got it. What a finish, and so Boys is beaten, and the big story here, Lou is through. Lou Hightow beats Carl Boys 8-7, a match that will remember it for one shot, the missed eight ball right at the death. Extraordinary. Unbelievable. All I could think about on the eight is when I've landed on the eight, I thought, it's going to go mental in here, so I'm going to jump on the arena, and I'm just going to go crazy, and then... When I've played the eight ball, I'm thinking, just rattled, I was like, what's happened there? I didn't know if it had gone in and come back out, I was like, I was just in shock. And obviously I've not seen it back yet, it, it, was, it was crazy. Just, just unbelievable. What a great start to the 2015 Whirlpool Masters. Van Boning and Fyne are both through to round two, but boys fell at the first hurdle. There's plenty more excitement to come. Join us next time when Walid Majid is up against another Englishman, Daryl Peake.